Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul's words in Philippians chapter 4 hit us a little differently this year. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Do not be anxious about anything. In years past, we could nod nod along with Paul and generally be on the same page, But, but then 2020 happened, and we found ourselves in circumstances that we never dreamed we would be in. Brush fires destroyed millions of acres of land in Australia. We were on the brink of nuclear war with Iran, 176 people died in a Ukrainian plane crash. Our president's impeachment trial began, and that was all just two weeks into January. Before there were, was ever any mention of a, of a pandemic, before we shut the doors of the church for eight straight weeks, before Holy Week was canceled, Easter was canceled, we suddenly learned that there was such a thing as murder hornets, Racial tensions divided our country in the wake of events that never should have happened. Deadly fires erupted across California, Washington, Colorado. Hurricanes with names you only see because you've had so many storms you've exhausted the list. A new president was elected. And this very week we find ourselves back where we were in March on the brink of another shutdown, just in time for Christmas. And Paul says, do not be anxious about any of it. Rather, lift all of it up in prayer with thanksgiving. Because being thankful is somehow the remedy to being anxious. At least that's how Paul's words here are often construed. Thankfulness cures Anxiety. If I can find something for which I can be thankful in any situation, anxiety will be kept at bay. And so off we go, scavenging for reasons to be thankful, searching for a silver lining, attempting to reframe all of our experiences in ways that make it obvious as to why we should actually be thankful for the things we are going through. You know, I can be thankful for a pandemic because it gave me more time with my family, time to learn a new skill, push our church forward so we could offer a live stream for our service. You know, mankind got a chance to rest. Creation got a chance to rest. And we could probably come up with a hundred reasons why we could actually be thankful for everything that happened in 2020. And yet... In doing so, we could also miss the point of what Paul is actually saying here in this passage. And we must be careful about the take-home point here. It's not, you need to be more thankful. It isn't, behind every cloud is a rainbow. You know, Paul isn't telling someone who lost a parent or a child to COVID that that they should find a way to be thankful for their death. He isn't telling a family that just lost their home to a fire or a flood that they should be thankful that their house was destroyed. He isn't insisting that a community feeling the pain of great injustice should silence their crying out and just say thank you. That isn't how Thanksgiving works. Thanksgiving isn't a remedy, it isn't a strategy, it isn't a means to a better life. Thanksgiving is a result of God's action in our lives. Thanksgiving is the fruit that grows from being deeply rooted in all that God has done for you. 
And you can't nail apples to the branches of a tree and call it an apple tree. When we moved back in, or moved into our house four years ago here in Colorado Springs, there was a, the skeleton of a tree in our backyard. It, it looked like firewood that was still in the shape of a tree. And my first thought upon expecting it was, uh, you know, I wonder if someone at the church has a chainsaw I can borrow. But after talking to the previous owners, they said that it was supposedly an apple tree. They never seen any proof of that. And so we left it there. And the next spring, new shoots began to grow from the trunk and some of the branches. Green leaves started to appear. For three years, we watched as this tree we thought to be dead surprised us with new growth. Until finally, it produced its first apple. And then a second and as we enjoyed that first bite, uh, we couldn't believe that something so delicious had come from something that looked so dead. You know, I'd never been more thankful for an apple in my life. Now, Thanksgiving isn't the remedy to anxiety or, or a means of making it through a difficult time. It's the result of God's action in your life. It's the fruit that grows from being deeply rooted in all that God has done for you. I mean, you didn't come into this world looking dead. You were dead. And yet God didn't see you as a tree that needed to be cut down. He saw you as a child that he created, a, a child that he redeemed by Christ on the cross, a child in which the Spirit would produce incredible fruit. He planted you in his kingdom, washed you in baptism, fed you his very body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins. He destined you for eternity. And no matter what season of life you may find yourself in, no matter what you may going, be going through, no matter what this year has left to offer, you can say, the Lord is at hand. He is with you. Your refuge your strength, your very present help in trouble. Though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though nations rage and kingdoms totter, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The God who led his people Israel into that promised land and gave them the fruit for which they were to be thankful as they brought it to the Lord that day. That was not fruit they found on their own. It was the Lord. It was fruit that only the Lord could bring and give to them. Through it all, the Lord is at hand to listen and provide for everything that is on your heart and your mind according to his gracious will as, as you lift it to him in prayer. Your cries to God will not be silenced. You will be heard and seen and loved. He, he will not send you looking for reasons to be thankful. Instead, he gives you his peace. He peels back the layers and shows you the end of the story. He brings you into that new land that you may have a glimpse of what is coming. That he, you may have there in your hands the fruits of that new creation and say, yes, even now, even in this time, I am thankful. Not because you found it, because the Lord gives it to you graciously and lovingly. He gives you his peace. A peace that confounds the world and leaves people wondering how. A peace that guards you and grounds you. A peace that reveals what is true and honorable and just and pure and lovely and worthy of praise. A peace that produces fruit. Thanksgiving from the Lord. That no anxious thought could ever stand against Thanksgiving, for whether you are brought low or abound, whether you have plenty or you hunger, whether you have an abundance or need, Thanksgiving, for the God of peace is with you.
Now may this peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.